I thank you so much for watching these videos. My name is Kamen Simon and let's proceed. All right, do not forget to subscribe, like, share. Now, every moment you subscribe, the YouTube, uh, the YouTube algorithm uh, suggests our videos to different people. I also encourage you to go ahead and donate so that you can support this channel. Now, after donating to this, uh, the link is down there in the description, you get access to different files that you do not need to recreate. For example, you don't need to rewrite the code. You just need to go and copy it. And the donation starts from $5, okay? But it is free. You can decide to donate $10, $6, $7 based on what you want. And do not forget to rate us. All right, let's go ahead. Now, we're going to go to begin with the login and the register so that we have this done once and for all. In fact, it's one of the most difficult and tricky things. That's why I'm doing it first. Now, I already have a register component here, so you can go ahead and copy the code. And inside, I have an in input field. Remember, I'm using Bootstrap View. So inside this input field, I'm going to put one bind. But before I put the bind, I'm going to come down here and write script. And inside that script, I'm going to write the usual export like we saw in the previous video. So export. And then what does it export? It exports default. And then we get now to return data. So the first thing we need to have is the data function and then inside this data function i'm going to put what view will identify for our render elements so the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to write an array called register register and this array will have a sub array into it and this sub, sub array is going to have maybe my first property which is going to be first name Okay, which will be empty and then the other will be so uh, this will be uh, by the way into brackets because it's it's an object okay so the other will be last name okay and then the other will be we're going to look at email email which is going to be empty too and then we're going to look at phone number phone number which two will be empty and then lastly we're going to try to access now instead of the phone uh we're going to try to access okay first name last name email and then lastly password password which will be empty okay so how do i make sure that this is bound to whatever input we have here so we use what we call the v model okay so the v model so we're going to go now into this array here that we have so it will be register dot first name so register dot first name all right so i'm going to go ahead and update other components such as the last name among others and and if you've already donated you know that this code is fully available in here so you so you don't need to you know to rewrite it you just need to copy it and paste it and then we follow along all right so i'm going to go ahead and paste and then as you see there we are we have the first name last name email phone number and password so i'm just going to go and put the right v model now I i'll show you what the v model does and then you get to decide what you really need so the first the, this v model will be the last name and then the other v model again here will be the email so register.email and then the other v model will be register.phone number Okay, it will be register dot phone number, and then lastly register dot password. So it will be register dot password. All right, then we go ahead and save, and I'm going to show you the, what the V model does actually. As a way of checking what V model does for us, I'm just going to write a simple statement here. For example, I'm going to put a p tag 
In fact, let me put one H1 tag so that we can see it actually physically. So for example, I'm going to check what I input in register.fastname by calling register.fastname there in the H1 tag. Okay, those of you who, was, who watched our first videos, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, when I say I'm calling this, I'm calling this array, the placeholder here, register, and then the first object, what is meant to go there. So if I come here and type maybe come here, okay. All right, so you can see it update there, uh, Simon. So which means whatever we input is being actually referenced down here in the JavaScript of our model. So which means whatever we input here, okay, since it is referenced in the, in the V model, it is already taking in that input. And I've just called this up here to resurface that input. So which means you can always double check even, even if you, okay, it's just a check statement, but it does, it's not required as such. For example, even, even if I go to the email here, email and I go ahead and uh, okay you can see the email is already there <laughs> okay so that's what the vmodel does for us now we need to double check and submit this so what we're going to do we go into our form at the top okay our form and we choose what we need to do when someone submits okay and sometimes it may not even be required because you can create a button. For example, we have a button already here, the register button. And then the register button checks if someone submits, what do you take in? Okay, so let's do that. So since this is a form, we want to prevent certain conditions. So we're going to do at submit, at submit, then dot prevent. Because we want to prevent certain things like reloading pages, checking things. So at submit dot prevent, okay. So what what now function are we going to run all the method? They are calling it a method here. So we're going to put on register with the capital R. I, I, I do some camel casing. So on register, I'm used to camel casing. So on register. So that the submit the, the button here, okay, should be a type of submit. Otherwise, if I don't do if okay, let me show you. If I don't do anything to the button, nothing is going to happen. For example, let me go ahead and write the method here. And I'll just put a comma here and then write methods. Uh, so I'm going to write methods. And then I have one called on register. On register. Okay, so that's the method I've just created. So I'm going to do a console.log to show that we have run the register button, okay? I'm going to do a console.log. Let me just push it up here. Console.log to indicate that register button pressed. And I expect to see this in on inspection here so i right click and then i choose to inspect okay i need to see it in the console there so i'll just make sure that this is rendering the console just like that so if i put the name kamiya simon and whatever is there and then i press nothing happens see that so which means the button here so which means the button here need to be of a type and which type is going to be submit. So type submit, just like any other, just like the usual, you know, buttons you do in CSS forms and bootstrap. So the type is going to be submit. Great, so if I come back, all right, so let it load and refresh. And then the name is Kamiya Simon, and then I type press register, so you can see register button press. So which means we can now get this information as it is being given to us here, then we collect it and send it to the API route. But we need to also have checks, and I'm going to talk about those checks. All right, so let me go ahead and collect this information. So to capture this information, we're going to go ahead and create one uh, variable. It can be a constant, so I'm going to create constant, a constant, 
and I give it uh, maybe reg data, data, reg data, sorry, so reg data, which will equal to, okay, now the other data. So, for example, I'm going to take in the first name, and this first name, okay, will be equal to this dot register dot first name. Okay, then we go ahead and do the others. For example, the last name, so the email, phone number, and password. All right, so we're going to check if we are really capturing this data by doing another console.log. So it will be a console.log. And then what are we taking in? We are taking in reg data. All right, so when I press, I, ne I need to get all this information given to me in an array in my string. All right, so let me go ahead and input my my information. So the first name is going to be Kamiya Simon, the email, the phone number, and then the password, one, two, three, four. And then I choose to register. All right, so there we are. We have our information captured as entered. You can see the email. You can see the first name, last name, uh, just like we have. So what we're remaining with is pushing it now to the database. And how do we do that? Okay, so let's do that. We already have, I already have my database here. And you can see it's taking in the first name, last name, email, phone number, and password. Now, all this is being done in Laravel, but if you do not have that, which means you may be able to use the, the, the one of the lessons where I talked about how to create a JSON array within Vue.js, or you're using a certain API and we're trying to verify that. But however, you can use dummy APIs. Uh, I've seen APIs, mock API, rapid API testing. And you can do send information to the API and you see if the, uh, the API re receives the information and then also retrieve information from the API. But for us, that's not what we're, going, what we're going to do. I told you I'm going to be using Laravel because I don't need to create a whole API system because Laravel has a way it intercoordinates with Vue. But however, it's advisable for you to have an API. All right, so instead of this, what do I need to do? I can dispatch, okay? to our storage, and then I take the data to the API, or I can do it here. So I'm going to first do it here in the register here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to first do an async, okay, and then what information am I doing? So the async was supposed to be done here. So async, but it's not a must, but however, it's very important. And then await. So we have one thing that we use called Axios. Okay. So I have the Axios documentation here. So let me go and just Google Axios. And if you've already installed uh, Vue.js, Axios comes with it. Uh, okay. This Axios is not the one I'm looking for. For is your, <laughs> I'm looking for the Axios for, for developers. And I'm getting this one. Okay, I'm looking for the Axios website. And here it is, Axios NPM. So it's NPM, uh, Node Package Manager, JS, Axios. All right, so you can read through the documentation for Axios, but Axios is very easy to use, in fact. You don't need to install Axios if, if, you're, uh, if you're using... Um, Vue.js it's already installed for you automatically. I can show you do, I can show you that. If I come to my browser here, then I, I scroll into my uh, package.json, I have Axios already here. So here is Axios. Okay? But if you're using JavaScript, okay, <laughs> you need to uh, use Axios or even link to the CDN. Axios has a CDN by the way. Here is the Axios CDN if you're using JavaScript or any JavaScript uh, item but however you can also use the fetch api so let me use let me check on fetch api okay you can use the fetch api here okay <laughs> um 
I think we shall test both uh, in uh, one video. We're going to test Fetch and Axios. All right, so let me go ahead and use Axios and then we see what we need to do. So I'm going to do a post. I'm not going to use a get. I'm going to do a post on my post information. All right, so here is one for us. Okay. And let me just copy this post request and then I, I use it here in our package. So I'm going to use await, then I post with Axios. So I'm doing control V. All right, so now I don't need this first thing. I don't need it. Reason why, whatever I'm, I'm, I'm putting in here, I've already done it here. So which means I can delete this with these brackets here. And then instead I put reg data. Because I've already done it here. And the reason I do it here is to first verify. In fact, I'm, go I'm going to write my verification code, which will check the number of inputs uh, if any field is empty. So I'm going to post this to one field called, maybe I'm going to post it to register. And then I save. So since I'm using Laravel, the, the, the only thing I need to do is to go to my web here. I don't have uh, a register route. I think I have an auth route. So let me first run and I see if I'll get a response. So I'm going to go ahead. Where are you? And then I put the inputs and then I choose to register. All right. So I expect to see something, but I've not seen anything. And this is it. Request has failed and status cost is this and this. So the reason I've done this is I want you to know how to check these uh, responses. Or for example, with Laravel, it's even easy. So how do I do that? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the end track here and I click. Okay. So Laravel will be giving me what issues that I need to have. For example, it is telling me the, the password field is required. Now, I already did set up. So I'm going to go with the password of 1, 2, 3, 4. However, let me first double check in my Laravel and I check the password field here. The password field requires a minimum of, of a minimum of eight. So it's already doing a validation for me in here inside Laravel. So let me go ahead and put uh, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Have I done that? Okay. Let me first do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I'll just check that and okay, verify. So I choose to register. Great. So I have no error. Okay, I do have one here. The given data was invalid. The confirmation does not match. Okay, so I do not have a confirm field, <laughs> which is in my validation here, and I'm going to eliminate the confirmation and the password confirmation field with the validation. Okay, so let me do that. So I've removed the, confirm the confirmation if the password really matches. Then I'm going to choose to register. And voila, I have registered successfully, but I've not returned anything. So if I go to my database and I choose to refresh, there we go. We have our first data. We've been able to register. All right, so how do we get back this now? Or verify that someone has registered and we get back the information. We're going to see that in our next video, but it's good that we have now someone that is registered and we can register anyone. All right, so thank you so much for watching this video, but we need now to do certain modifications. Uh, please go ahead and subscribe. For example, we need to clean up this field when someone has already registered. And also if the registration is true, we check if that someone is registered and then we come back and reroute them to log in. All right. So let's do that in the other coming two to three videos. But I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about both the Fetch API and the uh, Axios. So we've used Axios. We're going to register again another person with Fetch.